All right, so welcome everybody. It's great to have you here. Happy Friday. It's January 15th, 2021. Uh, it's kind of nice to say 2021. There's been so much focus on getting ourselves out of 2020 and starting fresh. Ain't exactly going like we hoped so far, <laughs> but that's okay. But that's okay. We're going to make it through all of this extra look. I mean, you know, there had to be a finale to the fireworks show. And what better here in the United States than a, 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 a domestic insurrection? Yeah, why? Well, of course. Of course that's what we would do in the last two weeks, uh, the first two weeks of, of, of the new year. Of course. And so that's what we're doing. We're having a little civil war. Don't you worry about a thing. We do this all the time. Okay, once before, but we we know what we're <laughs> we know we know what we know what we're doing, and so uh, we're gonna we're gonna be fine. We're gonna get this. Oh my God! If you're many of you don't live here in the U.S. and uh, I just imagine you sitting back eating popcorn and shaking your head at the Americans, going, "What? Honestly, what what the hell are you doing?" Uh, it's kind of how we feel too, but uh, we're going to make it. It's going to be okay. And we, in the meantime, you and me, we got businesses to run and we got the projects to complete and uh, important stuff to do. So let's focus on that. Uh, and uh, let me tell you real quick, let me give you the, the um, uh, uh, rundown, if you will, of what we're going to cover today. Um, oh, there's go live on Facebook. All right. Yeah, I'm not even doing that. Screw Facebook. Screw Facebook. I'm over Facebook. I don't, you know, I, that's a whole nother topic. I'm not going to go down rabbit holes today. Uh, just don't enjoy spending my time there. Much rather be talking with you guys inside of Copy Chief about uh, stuff that actually makes a difference in our lives. So uh, here's... There we go. Official title screen, the chief chat for January 15th, 2020. We are currently doing these once a month. Uh, I invite you to yell and scream for more if you would love us to go back to two a month. But frankly, the reason we're only doing one a month right now is just to give our team a break. Uh, we looked for ways to reduce our bandwidth because we were frankly a bit overwhelmed. Uh, just putting out so much content. And we're testing, and usually our test is positive when we do this. If we do a little less and make it more meaningful, will that be better than doing a, a little more? And uh, having, you know, that, that's the trade off. If you're putting out a, a ton every, you know, you ever listen to like a, a radio show, a daily four hour radio show, there's a, there's a couple of good moments. I guess in, in in those, but I've never, frankly, sat and listened to a complete four hour radio show since I was probably a teenager. But you know, uh, it's not going to be golden content for four hours every day. It just can't be. And so uh, there's a give and take there. And we don't we want to deal less in volume, content wise, and more in quality. That's one of our goals for 2020. So today, uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the, the next live training we're going to do here in Copy Chief. That's going to be on February 17th, I believe. Um, it is the 50-25-25 plan for freelance success. Uh, um, uh, playing around with, with uh, catchier titles. But essentially, this is a way, and if you were on the Dream Gig training, you saw the, a little bit about this. I'm going to go in much deeper about how to how to spend your time in your business. We don't uh, know how to spend our time in our business. And why would we? Because nobody trains us on exactly which things we should be doing to grow our business, right? And so uh, the way I look at all, everybody has the same 24 hours to give to the world. And uh, how do we break that up as freelancers, whether we're just starting, whether we're advanced, uh, 50, 25, 25, 50% 50 of your time and energy should be uh, generating 100% of your uh, needed income, your base income, your, your happy money, your sure money, 
Like if nothing else goes right this month, I got my, I got my shore money and, and we're okay. And then what do you do with the other 50% of that time? And I break that into two categories of 25% each and show you how to do things that also generate revenue, but you kind of don't need the money. You're kind of experimenting with gigs and projects. And what do you do with that other 25%? How do you keep growing your business so that we don't stop, fall into feast and famine cycles and all these problems that we have as independent business owners? So that's the full training on February 17th. And I'm really excited to get this out to you, share it with you and sort of formalize it as a, as a reference point, as a talking point that we can all look to. Everybody I coach from million dollar businesses in the, in the super group to um, you know, up and running and humming and looking to optimize uh, freelance businesses in, in real free life, in the accelerator group, to people just starting their career, like haven't even had a client yet. I get to work with everybody in the full range in the 50, 25, 25 is a breakthrough for, for everyone at every level when it comes to running a freelance business. So I'm very, very excited to formalize this and, and share it with you and, and make it a thing that we can all use to reference and use and plan our businesses with. We're gonna talk about flow writing on demand with my man, Mike Renard in just a minute. Mike, if you, I'm sure you know about Mike, I'm sure you've probably been through his courses and workshops, not only here in Copy Chief, but his private workshops. Mike is uh, known as a great Facebook ads expert uh, is very successful in helping his clients achieve a uh, positive uh, return on ad spend through Facebook. However, what Mike really is, is, a, is an incredible copywriter, an incredible idea person, and he has an incredible uh, talent skill for optimizing offers. If you ask Mike, he'll tell you what he really does in his business all day is fix offers for his clients. And then when you have the offer right, ain't that hard to write good copy around it. Uh, but Mike is also uh, into a lot of cool things. He's a surfer, he's very into Wim Hof, and he does a lot of breathing techniques and a lot of mental game. And uh, Mike gifted me his new writing flow concept. And I did it this morning and I, I'm excited to share the results of it with you. And then we're gonna do a critique, all right? So uh, before we do all that, uh, one cool announcement uh, I think that I'm making formally for the first time is that we've added uh, an important, very important role in our company. And we found, uh, I believe, uh, the real gift of a person to fill that role. And the role is uh, community manager community manager. Now, uh, you might think, wow, Kev, Copy Chief has been running for six years and you just now hired a community manager. No, uh, we, we've had people in this role before, but never officially, never one person with a very clear agenda for what we need our community manager to do. We have three jobs here in Copy Chief, three jobs in this company. Number one, blow away our current members with value. Just make you feel like this is the best money you spend every year, every month, however you're paying to be a member of Copy Chief and you couldn't be more excited about what we, what we do together. Uh, bring in new members, uh, you know, uh, initiate more uh, people into the tribe who are out there, poor things, unaware that such an amazing thing exists and have them be blown away by the value when they join and then uh, create great content so that we can nurture a, an audience and help people who need it and uh, let them decide when the time is right for them to become a, a more formal member of our, of our world here. That's what we do. Uh, and so, um, uh, why was I saying all that? <laughs> Those are the three. Those are the three jobs we have here in Copy Chief. Thank you. And so, uh, <laughs> community manager, uh, we have 
our incredible BAs, our bad ambassadors, uh, you know, working pro copywriters who lovingly and frankly, amazingly volunteer their time. They do not get paid by me. I've tried to pay them and they won't take the money. Uh, bad ambassadors who volunteer to come be helpful to you. They welcome every new member of Copy Chief. They uh, answer your questions. They tag other members who they think might be able to help you uh, with, with anything you're struggling with or want to do better. They help guide you to the trainings. They contribute trainings. Uh, it's incredible what they do. Uh, they, they often critique copy, but as I recently made clear in the critique section, it's not their job to, cr to, to critique copy. That's something the members do for each other. So if, uh, if a BA does jump into a critique and give you feedback, that's a, that's a, that's a big bonus. If you look on the profile of, of BAs, you might find that they offer private critiques for sale. And that's something you should absolutely take advantage of um, if you want a, a private one-on-one -on -one critique from a, a working pro who, who you know about, who someone you know and trust already because they've been so generous inside of our form. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, and then, um, so they've all been helping us run the community. But now finally, we have a single person whose job it is whose uh, mission in life, <laughs> at least for, for part of their time, uh, is to help us optimize the user experience here in Copy Chief. And that person is Lolita Algier. I, I know I said the first name right. I'm pretty hopeful I said the second name right. So let me get uh, a Lolita on here and just uh, uh, say hello. No, no, I, I screwed it up. <laughs> um, and... Uh, let me formally bring on Lolita for you. Don't move a Lolita, I'll find you here in the, uh, did you raise your hand? You did not, don't raise your hand. Um, L is where in the alphabet now? Did they put that, why can't I see you, Lolita? You, you raised your hand, okay, there you go. Awesome. If you haven't met uh, Lolita yet, then uh, here she is. And uh, she's only two weeks into the job and already doing a fantastic work for us. Hi, Lolita. I'm here. You're here, like magic. That last name is Allgaier. Allgaier, got it. <laughs> That's a, that, is, but, that is a tough one, I gotta say. Since I live in Florida, I've had a lot of people say alligator, so you definitely <laughs> had like a step above them for sure. <laughs> I was the second category of nimwit trying to say your name. Uh, Allgaier, got it. Lolita Allgaier, I like that. That has nice flow. Uh, it's a great name. Okay, cool. So welcome, first of all, thank you for accepting this role. Uh, you're already doing a great job. Tell everybody how you see from your perspective what you're doing here with Copy Chief. I just like, you know, having all power over you guys, you know, being able to <laughs> move you from places. I mean, if you post something in the wrong forum, like I get to take care of that, you know. But in all seriousness, um, copywriting in itself is so fascinating to me, not just because of the writing, but because of the type of person who works in this type of role. Yeah. Um, we're all go-getters. We're all entrepreneurs in some um, aspect. And that's the kind of person that I want to be around. So when I started my official copywriting career six months ago, I knew that I want to be around this type of person. I'm not just here to kind of like freelance it away on my own and kind of figure it out by myself. It's about building those connections with you badasses, really. Like every single one of you, all of the um, commitment and all of the messages that I've seen in the forum have been incredible. That's the kind of person I wanted to be around. Um, joined Copy Chief at the time, kind of like hung around and, you know, looked at what was going on. And when this role came up, I thought, you know what, that's my, that's my ticket. Um, I'll be able to learn along with people, but also, you know, build these relationships in a very meaningful way. So I want to get to know all of you guys. Um, it's not just about managing the forum, um, you know, taking some work off Kevin and Rachel's plate, but it's also about um, building relationships. Be here. Awesome. You cut out a little bit at the end there, maybe some Wi-Fi issues, but um, 
Yeah, thank you. It's it, it's great to have you here with us, doing this with us, and uh, that's what got me so excited when when we met and and I saw your application. Uh, I'm going to send you back since you're frozen. Um, thank you, Lolita. Um, as you can see, Lolita is very enthusiastic. And uh, are we all frozen now? Okay, I can't uh, change. <laughs> Change role to attendee. She's very stoic. Yes, she, she she'll loosen up. She'll loosen up as we go. Okay, there we go. Um, and so, um, uh, you know, she's one of us. Clearly, right? She. There you are. Oh, you're back. I'm talking about you. You kicked me off for no reason. <laughs> you just were there, kind of, with us like this for a minute, as 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 Zoom likes to do. Um, and so, uh, you're not only you're you're uh, here to help in all kinds of ways. And today, let's talk about uh, something we love to do in Copy Chief, which is hold skills workshops. Because, you know, we all know that there's a, a million different ways to practice getting good at Copy Chief, whether we need the practice or not. We like to write and we like to show off our writing. And we also love to see how we're doing things compared to how other copywriters are doing things because we learn from that. It's a good gauge for, for where we're at and, and all those things that builds confidence. And so this month we have the reach workshop, which uh, again comes uh, another piece of the, of the critique training that I didn't want to get overlooked because I thought it was a really important piece of that training. And so reach is uh, it's an acronym and it's five different ways for you to take a, a, a method of critiquing copy and turn it into a, an article, a blog article, uh, a, a uh, something you could share all kinds of ways. Because look, when it comes to what we do, copywriting, uh, people need to see the work. They need to see the work to understand, you know, maybe better what copywriting is, what parts of it are, are important to have have correct. And if you can teach them that and show your expertise at the same time that leaves them really wanting to know you better uh, whether they want to become your student or whether they want to hire you to work with you and so cr using critiques to create authority content is the easiest win you can get and trying to market your your freelance business and so um, we've already had some great submissions uh, Lolita, and we're open all month with this challenge. Yeah, and the thing about a challenge like this is that, as of especially as a beginner copywriter, you know, in comparison to all, like all of you guys, for myself especially, um, you are not on the same level as everyone else when it comes to landing those really big gigs. You know, the people who have the experience, they have those, um, you know, six, seven figure clients. But where you are on the same level with everyone else is in your ability to create a piece of content in a critique style. Um, so that it's very difficult, you know, to be able to get your get the copy that you want um, just for a client at this point. You know, you're you're landing the smaller level clients, but the way you build that expertise and the way that you build that personal brand for yourself as being an expert yeah. is actually in creating these critiques. Yeah, exactly right. And I, and I like to say that it's something we're doing all day, every day, because we can't stop ourselves. If we're interested and fascinated uh, and obsessed with, with copywriting, as we all are, uh, we're critiquing all day long. What, you know, why is this ad good? What, what's making it work? Why did it fail? We, this is how we learn. And so here's the challenge. If you're a member of Copy Chief, hopefully you've you've seen it and are planning to dive in. But you know, if you want to be ambitious, do do every one of these. I, I break down five different ways to take a critique and turn it into really cool uh, content. Uh, you can see that Brian McCarthy and others jumped in. And Melanie, who's here, uh, to talk about how doing content like this, um, you know, help them grow their business. Um, uh, Shaba has already jumped in with some um, great ones. Uh, this is just the uh, how to do it um, thread, the actual uh, challenges here. And so you can see, oh, this is a great one by, um, uh, uh, by Roman. 
uh, and uh, about John Caples and how John Caples writes the first paragraph. Just, 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 just take a look at how great this piece of content is. And by the way, this is uh, Roman's first blog post. Roman's a pretty experienced copywriter. He's, he's got some, he's busy with client work. He's following 50, 25, 25 to a T. He's in the accelerator coaching group. Um, and look at uh, how great this is. It's, it's such a cool way to learn. Oh, why can't I find the, the links busted, unfortunately. Um, da, 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 da. Well, that's unfortunate. I have to let him know. But um, it's a really it's a really good out article. I don't know why it's not live on the site right now. Um, maybe he moved it. But, um, oh, there it is. Here we go. And so it's all about John Caples and how he writes the first paragraph of copy, his philosophy on it, and then some examples um, six different formulas Capel's found in pages of uh, Reader's Digest uh, shows the ads. I mean, you know, and again, this is this kind of how much Roman talked about uh, on a coaching call, how much he learned by by going deep. You know, we're all ingesting this information. And when you take a minute and go, what do I really know about this? When you teach what you want to learn, it's the most powerful way to actually learn for yourself. And now <laughs> He's got this amazing piece of fresh authority content that clearly shows that this guy's an expert and understands direct response copy on a deeper level. And it's only going to help him grow his business. So, so that's what we're all about this month. Uh, dive in. If you're not a member, join and join us so you can uh, do this work with your peers. Uh, understand how this will help your business. If you're already a member, jump in and have fun with the rest of us. Thank you, uh, Lolita, for jumping on with me. Thank you for being our community manager. And uh, can't wait for all the cool stuff we're going to do together. You bet. Only good things ahead. Appreciate you. We'll talk soon. Awesome. Um, I changed you. OK, there we go. Perfect. All right, let's get Mike Renard on. And isn't she great? What great energy. Uh, man, yeah, I could go on forever about the amazing relationships I, I've made uh, it, through Copy Chief. It's completely uh, changed my life and continues to. Um, all right, Mike Renard, uh, this is exciting. Now, look, we all uh, struggle sometimes with the blinking cursor and uh, just trying to get started writing something there's mike how are you buddy what's going on good to see you my man good um to be here. thanks thanks for joining and so i'll just dive right into it because i don't i don't want to give too much away because this is a product you're creating and uh, again because we we work together and we're buddies you gave me an early look at it and and it's so simple to use i immediately put it into action and I just want to talk about the result and let's just talk about the, the problem it solves a little bit. So um, I, get, I think I can say, Mike, without giving too much away, there's three components. There's a there's a uh, exercise to get your mind ready to literally change your your body chemistry to, to immediately achieve flow state. There is a, a timed writing exercise where you uh, determine a, a set amount of time and you don't stop writing. Uh, and then the, there is a, an agenda for what you're writing, at, at least an idea for what you, you think you're going to talk about. And of course, the whole point of flow is if, if you go off in a completely different direction, that may be the best thing that could have happened. There's really no rules after you start moving the pen or start tapping on the keyboards, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That you summed it up perfectly. <laughs> cool. So I did this this morning. You, you texted this to me last, last night. It took me uh, about two minutes to read your instructions. Uh, and I did everything I just described. And here's what, what happened. So here's the result. Uh, I, I, I wanted to work on the 50, 25, 25 and, and think through more about this training and why it's important. And I started writing one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 pages. And I set the timer, Mike, for 25 minutes because I, I, I knew 
that once I get in the zone, I usually need want more time. So I thought, I, I bet I can get to 25 minutes. <laughs> 25 minutes, the, 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 the timer went off and I hit repeat. I ain't, I'm, I'm, don't stop me now. Uh, it, it rang again and I hit repeat again. I, and, and, and then I finally hit about here where I was like, all right, now I'm starting to have to stop a little bit. And you know, I could feel when I, the session was sort of done. But uh, it was uh, 62 minutes and 22 seconds. What, 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 you know, and, and so you don't need an hour to do this, but it could easily turn into an hour if you got a lot to say about what, you, what you're thinking about saying. It's awesome, man. I love, I love that you went right through the, the timer twice. twice. I, I have that happen sometimes to myself too. You're like, yeah. It's nice to have that smaller commitment. Like, you know, all I have to do is whatever your time container is, 15, 20, 20, you did 25 minutes. Um, but then if you're feeling good, why not keep going, you know? Exactly. If you have the time, uh, sometimes you only have 10 minutes. <clears throat> you go, I got to get something done. I've done that before where I'm like, ah, I'm late on this. I'm, I'm late on this email to the list. And I'm just going to set a timer and basically free write and Sometimes it's pretty good. I made the mistake once, by the way, I want to mention this. This is interesting. I've never mentioned this before. I made the mistake once of telling the, the reader in the email, hey, I wrote this in 10 minutes because, uh, and I thought, well, this will be helpful, similar to what you're doing. I go, sometimes you just set a timer and write and, and something decent comes out. I got more angry replies to that. My, they were so insulted that I only took 10 minutes to write the email. I was like, damn. <laughs> That's like learning in a movie, like never kill the dog. You can't kill the dog. <laughs> that ruins the movie. Yeah, I remember Tom Hanks talking about that and like Turner and Hooch or something. He's like, I'll never kill the dog again. <laughs> anyway, don't ever say that you only took a few minutes to write something. It can be your, your little secret. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm really excited to, to see this, this full program and yeah, tell us how you use it, Mike, and how you sort of like came up with it. Yeah, yeah, cool. I'm and man, thanks for getting the feedback back so fast on it. That was awesome. Uh, seeing your text this morning. So you know, for me, I I guess like just from a writing perspective, if I'm always uh, most interested in the idea, right? And I've talked about this a lot. We've talked about it a lot, and it's certainly not something that I came up with. But the idea is the most important part, right? So I spend a lot of time on brainstorming and ideation and all that kind of stuff before I write anything. And I'm always looking for ways to make that better and seamless and, and whatever. Um, and I guess the way this really started coming together for me is like, I've, you know, I'm into surfing. I've always been into a lot of extreme sports, not that they're necessarily extreme, but that's what they're categorized as, right? right. Like downhill mountain biking, rock climbing, surfing, skateboarding, all that kind of stuff. And when you're doing those type of sports, a lot of times you end up being in flow automatically. Like it just happens as a result of the conditions that that sport creates. So when I'm surfing, you know, I, there's a lot of times where I'm just naturally in flow. It just happens. I don't have to do anything. Cause, cause it demands that to, your, your, your full attention to, to be doing such a thing. If you're, if you're exactly to a, to a wall, you, you, you ain't thinking of other stuff, <laughs> right? You're not like getting distracted by, something you got to do later that day, you are in that moment completely, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and then, but writing, I think like I've definitely had times where you just get in flow of writing, right? And you're in it, you're in that moment, you're just creating and it feels great, time disappears. But man, there's a lot of times where it does not happen that way with writing. Um, right. and, and I think it's because writing doesn't naturally create the conditions for it. So I was, this really for me was like, how do I, create flow more often when I'm writing and brainstorming and, and doing that type of thing. And that's going to require me to create those conditions um, versus them just naturally happen. Because if it's just what's naturally happening, <laughs> it's like, I'm basically relying on, okay, how did I wake up this morning? Am I in a great mood? Am I feeling creative? Am I feeling open? Um, or am I feeling closed and tight and have anxiety and stress? Uh, and, and that I didn't want to leave it up to kind of the chance of, of that. So flow writing really, uh, started that way for me of like, how can I have a little bit more control over this and make sure that I get into flow so that when I'm writing, when I'm brainstorming, when I'm doing all of these creative tasks that are demanding and are massively influenced by your state of mind, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
the quality is so much better when you are in an open free place. Uh, and, and that's really kind of how it started. So I just started experimenting with a lot of different ways to try and get into that state before writing. And this is kind of, yeah. you know, where, where it's come to. So it's exciting. I don't want to say more cause I don't want to give it away. It's, <laughs> it's something you're, you're still developing and testing with friends like me. And, but I can tell you, I just wanted to share my own result with it. Um, it's very exciting. It, I mean, that, that is the missing element of timed writing exercises and things like that is your, your mental state. And, and like I, I hinted at, Mike has a way to literally alter your, 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 your brain chemistry so that you, you are in akin to surfing mid wave, you, that level of focus and flow. So uh, more to come and it's, 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 it's really cool. So thank you, Mike, for sharing it with me and all the great work you do, man. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the feedback. And um, I'm stoked to, to get more people trying it. So cool, man. All right. More to come. Talk to you soon. Thanks right. for being here. See ya. Yeah. See you guys. All right. Mike Renard. Cool guy. Unfortunate about his looks. <laughs> what a bummer that he couldn't also be handsome. Um, all right. Uh, Keith Trimmels. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. Uh <laughs> Cool. Thanks um, uh, for being here. Good to see you. Okay, cool. Uh, let's dive into some uh, uh, critique here. Well, first, I want to mention, by the way, uh, it's it's not the most relevant thing uh, to what we do here, but I um, I had the COVID, and uh, I, uh, I don't know why that's valuable to share. I guess because I know many of us have probably had COVID everybody's trying to avoid having COVID if you haven't had COVID. So I thought I'd share a little bit about my uh, uh, experience with it. Um, I was fortunate, obviously, um, that I, I wasn't tremendously ill. I was definitely sick. It was kind of like having the flu for about two and a half weeks. Um, I, I fortunately did not get pneumonia. Um, I don't know. I get, that's a new thing I'm reading. I, I'll tell you what, you start reading about COVID a lot differently once you, once you get it. <laughs> and I uh, read a, a, an article yes, just yesterday about COVID lung in this doctor who's ringing alarm bells about x-rays she's seeing. And even if you didn't have pneumonia, that it could, COVID may really affect your lungs. So that's something I'll be watching for. But uh, again, compared to the fate of many people, uh, I, I feel very blessed for how, how mild my experience was health-wise. Uh, a lot of fatigue, a lot of brain fog. I basically lost a week of work. Um, and uh, I tell you, the, the, the other really interesting, of course, the, 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 the worst part of it is uh, wondering if you've affected, infected anyone else. And uh, that was the strangest kind of part of it first of all of course i have a family um fortunately we have a bit of space in in the house here and we were able to quarantine amongst each other but to suddenly not be able to hug your kids my wife and i um once i tested a uh, uh, positive she tested positive the next day uh, but uh prior to that three days earlier, we had both tested negative. The whole family tested negative. I was a little under the weather. And so I said, it was before New Year's. And I said, ah, if we're gonna see anybody at New Year's, we, get, we, get, we, let's all, we all went and got tested and we were all negative, all negative with a rapid test. And so, but I still didn't feel great. So I was extra uh, careful around everybody uh, that I did see over over New Year's, which wasn't a ton of people. It's just some close friends. I think everybody has our bubbles now, right? Where we feel like, oh, you know, this, these are the people that are keeping me sane. So we're taking a chance and we're all being as careful as we can. I know some of you have stayed completely isolated. Uh, yeah, right. But pods, I, I, I feel like most people probably have a pod and uh, that's what we have. So uh, then, of course, there's this panic of, so now trying not to in infect our kids, which thankfully we did not, which I don't know how that happened because uh, my wife uh, still gets to snuggle with our teenage son occasionally and did. 
uh, right before she tested positive and he did never had it. My daughter never had it. So, uh, of course, then it's the grandparents who were in there both 80 and uh, that was a panic. Uh, so the good news is everybody is tested negative multiple times since we tested positive. That is the greatest gift in all this that we didn't uh, infect anybody else. Thank God. Um, and so, but, but there, but there, there's a, there's a bit of a shame element. I got to tell you who, I don't know if anybody wants to say if they've, they've have, you don't, you don't have to say it, but um, I, it was really, if you did, if you have had it, you know, <laughs> this element of it that I, I would not have expected, which is, you, you, you know, now you're the person who had it and you don't really want to tell anybody more than the people it, 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 it need to know because uh, there's not much to say, you know, and, and you can sense that everybody uh, who you potentially could have um, uh, infected uh, has a lot of thoughts about how you should now, how long you should be quarantined and, and these things, which is perfectly their right. But you do, I don't know, it's like hard to explain. It's not like they're trying to shame you, but you, maybe we, we just take it upon ourselves to feel this. And, and, the, and the thing everybody asks you, which is funny to me is they go, where did you get it? <laughs> when did, you, as if, you know, there's a, there was a, a short moment where you did a, a thing so asinine that that, uh, you know, it's a, yeah, well, well you know, I don't, it was one of th three, th I don't know, I did share a nose hair trimmer with that homeless guy. That probably wasn't a good idea. That might have been it. It could have been that. It could have been the orgy. You know, I mean, half the people were wearing masks, but it was an orgy. You know, it could have been that. I mean, you know, I don't know where I, where I got it. Like, you know what I mean? If they, it's just, but I would, I would ask that too. If, if, uh, and I have asked that to people, it's just the, uh, who knows, but I will say this because now you're all wondering. Yeah. And that's what Jimmy said. Probably exactly. Right. Yeah. There was a guy at a bar sneezed right in my face. And I was like, Oh, that's probably, <laughs> uh, I will say that it is a bit like the sixth sense when you get the positive test and you start, you immediately run through your mind of like, what were, the, what were, what were those moments? And uh, the, the couple I had were, were in restaurants for sure. Definitely being served food. Uh, you know, you get a glimpse in the kitchen on your way to the restroom and you're like, Oh, that's, I uh, wish that was an open kitchen, you know, that probably wouldn't be going on. And, and uh, so anyway, just please be careful. Uh, it's this thing's raging out of control at, at, at new peaks all the time. Uh, but I know you're sensible. And fortunately, most a lot of us work from home. And uh, so please be careful. And uh, if, if you have any questions, if you do get it, I'm happy to answer, but I can't tell you much beyond what I just told you and the science that's out there. By the way, if you didn't see it though, if you are interested in, in learning more about uh, COVID and its effects and why it's spreading and all these things, um, Stephen Carter uh, generously gifted us two books he wrote on this topic. He's not, a, he's not an M, uh, a doctor, but he d did some very, very deep research uh, on the topic and you can find those inside a copy chief he's uh just wants to help other members understand all this so um check it out <laughs> you missed the orgy rachel hi rachel craft good to see you the best um yeah <laughs> hilarious okay let's do a critique uh we got an we got an email today and uh from william is william here william's here what's up william um, William, do you want to come on and look at your email together? I've already read through it and I'm happy to share some thoughts if it's helpful. Let me know uh, if you want to come on. Okay, cool. Let's bring on William. This is a, a really cool topic. It's a uh, mind game. We're all about mind game today on the chief chat uh, for, for young athletes who don't want to blow the big the big audition i thought this was a really interesting topic do we have a camera there we go hey william how are you my friend um, 
Oh, we're getting a, we're getting a little, we're getting a little staggered connection here. But uh, yeah. if if you have yeah, to, you can turn turn off your camera so we can at least hear you better. All right. Try that and see if that helps. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, I think that's better. All right. Cool, buddy. Yeah. Good to have you on, man. How are things? Things are great. Good. Glad to hear yeah, it. Yeah, as well as they can be. You know, got the same problems everyone does, you know, but exactly. you got you to see through it. Yeah, man. Well, I'm glad you're part of this community and, and, uh, and staying active, brother. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about this, um, uh, this email. Uh, I'll let you set it up. Uh, who, who it's for, uh, how they, uh, what's their level of awareness? How are they receiving this message? It's directed to the parents of, of baseball players, young baseball players, anywhere from eight to 18. And some people might criticize me for using gendered language, but it's a, it's a market of boys. Mm -hmm. And I, address the parents as uh, as uh, helping your, your son because yeah, it's more personal and it applies yeah um, i think that's a that's the, a sensible um, avatar the um uh product itself it, i think is a kind of a hard sell it's baseball equivalent of what mike is is selling it's trying to teach young people how to get into the flow baseball flow how to get the right mindset um in another email i, I call it getting in the zone and the reason why it's a hard sell is because the the parents really want to just think about hitting mechanics pitching mechanics the physical part and i think it's a little hard to sell parents that what their that their, their son really needs to do or also needs to do is to do visualization exercises, to do affirmations, to do things to get their mind in the right framework so that they can put their, their skills into practice. Right. And this is an existing product. So it's also uh, a long email. It's an existing product that this person never has tried to. There's actually two products here. It's a two for one sale. Um, he's never tried to promote it. I don't even have any testimonials to go by i i did find something in, it's in another email but um uh so he, it's it, it, how, it's a it's not quite a product it's a method that how how has he become an expert in this what are his credentials actually his story is in the email i believe if it is it I, is but i'm asking i'm asking if i if i'm if i'm unaware of this person uh did he play is he a player yes. did, okay he was a he might be the number two person in the uh, entire youtube baseball training world um the number one guy is number one because he himself is a marketer and does a great job and uh my client knows he needs to uh okay step up his market so this guy's game. got nothing but opportunity in front of him okay cool i actually have more to say about where the email leads than the email itself there's one more thing about that he doesn't have a sales page yeah he, okay. i don't even think he has a a, a, a checkout page yet because yeah. it's a two-for-one offer so the email's too long i know that but it's a sales page really yeah that that's for sure it's it's basically it's kind of an advertorial yeah that leads yes. to a sale so here's what let's do this okay so you you understand all the things that aren't there but uh for the sake of this lesson is there anybody you'd like me to bring on you're at a lot of these chief chats we got a lot of brilliant copywriters here i'll, I'll if, if you have a pick for someone you'd like to come on and also help um i'm happy for you to make it if not i will william is there anybody you recognize in the, that who's here who you'd like yeah to uh I recognize Melanie. Great. Melanie, are you able to come on? Great. Yeah. Smart choice. Uh, there's two of you, Melanie, uh, here in my list. Raise your hand and let me see if that gives you only one. Okay, cool. 
I'm going to bring this Melanie on. <laughs> okay, cool. Zach's working on a similar thing. Jimmy Parent's always ama amazing. Uh, Jam Thompson's already adding some cool stuff before we even look at the copy here. Um, hi, Melanie. I know you're getting your camera and your, your uh, mic worked out. Oh, we lost Melanie. Let me try to do this again. Yay. Hi, there Melanie. There I am. Hey. Hey, Melanie. How are you? I'm great. Good to see you. You too. Kevin, I don't know if you know this, but William wrote a bunch of blog posts for me back in the day. That's right. I do remember that. Yeah. 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 Great writer. And see that again. One for, one for Copy Chief. Remember that one? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Sometimes I write some more, Melanie. The, the, the that would be great. Anytime. Being a student means you become uh, you get a client out of your coach. <laughs> that Super was cool. such a such a blessing, and I really appreciate that, Melanie. It was oh. I had so much fun writing those. We oh, need to do three to more. Hear. That's right. We're almost there. For everybody else out there, if you decide to do a project, don't have nine buyers in your system. It's too many. One <laughs> is a good idea. Three, maybe. Nine, yeah. no. I've always thought that about nine buyers, and we've talked about that, and I could never reduce them because they're also valid. It's it's a challenge to, to reduce them, but um, cool. All right, well, let's look at this. And again, so now we, we have some context, everybody. Uh, uh, this is a person who's very good at helping young athletes, basically male baseball uh, players who uh, basically have a big audition coming up and don't want to blow it by being unprepared, having their mind in the wrong place. It's a little long for me to read it all, um, but I want to point out the things I like and things I think could improve just as a general lesson for everybody. So I will read a the first couple pages, Melanie, so we at least have that and you have some fair context here. Um, so subject is the way to clobber the tryout. A dear name, Meat Hunter. This is his story and the story of how the tryout can change a young man's life for better or for worse. Big kid hunter, strong, stocky, athletic, talented. He can do it all. By the way, I love that, William. I, I love how you summed this guy up in four adjectives, right? Like that, that's really, it's all I need to know. I get it. Really good. Uh, even when he was 12, he looked a lot like Roger Clemens on the mound. Okay. What Roger uh, would have looked like at 12. Again, fun, little personality, little aside there. Scary fastball, damn near unhittable. Uh, even with ordinary little leaguers fielding behind him in the, the opposing team could hardly ever score any runs against him. At the plate, he was fearsome, a home run thre threat at every bat. At third base, he was a human vacuum cleaner with a gun for an arm. Great. This is, you know, really in voice, speaking the language of, of the, the, um, the avatar. The, they, they know these terms. It, it, I, I'm immediately getting when I read this, William, that you get me and you, you understand this world. So that the home run there. Um, you talk more about Hunter and we... we quickly lead up, I'd say, good job of getting right to the point, which is uh, everybody knows except, uh, everybody knew except the high school tryout coaches, it's all fresh meat to them. So uh, basically it's like, yeah, everybody who goes to the games thinks this kid's like the, the, how could he not become a pro? But tell the scout that they could care less. They're looking at a million kids and so it means nothing to them. So we, we get a sense for the, how high the stakes are, the big day, and then you tell the story of Hunter basically just just tanking it, uh, and it's a it's a real sad thing. It's a letdown. Uh, best player in town, but he blew it in the tryout. And yeah, it's unfair. But he was missing uh, the element that could have changed this, and it's the mental game. And you talk, you give it an example of uh, was it Reggie Reggie Jackson. Uh, some of his achievements and how he embraced mental game and all that. Um, so I think the email is fantastic. Uh, frankly, everything can be improved. 
uh, if I had 10 copywriters on here, I'm, I'm sure they could point out things you, you could potentially do better. And I, and I, that's what the forum critiques are for. So definitely do that if you want to get more feedback. Melanie, anything you're seeing as I quickly summarize this uh, that, I, that I should be pointing out? Well, I'm coming in with super fresh eyes. So I, yeah. I represent the avatar, perhaps. I'm somebody's parent, although my kids aren't baseball kids. Yeah. But one question is they don't see anything except the subject line. So is the subject line, because yeah. the story's great. Yeah. So is the subject line the, how to give your kid an unfair advantage for that tryout? Like yeah. There's We need to be hitting the pain points mm -hmm. a little more aggressively, especially if we're leaning on this as the only way to get to the sale. If they yes. don't open it, they won't read it. Yeah, this feels like a, 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 a something I'd read in a trade, uh, an article I might read in a trade, this title, right? And it's like, okay, you're already reading about it. So here's a, a tip for clobbering the tryout. Yeah, and, and definitely like avoid being clever in subject lines, you know? Um, it, it, it's great to like I said, you did a great job of speaking the language down here, but some, I think the subject line is very much a headline and, it, and it, clarity is number one. And two, it's like curiosity. So uh, someone great. sent me an email yesterday and the subject line was hello, exclamation point, parentheses and potential client for you. And I clicked on that link <laughs> and I thought, I wish I'd written that subject line. It's so clear, it's yeah. so good. Yeah, that's essentially what you're trying to say here though is to the parent is hello and here's something awesome that'll make your kid's life better yeah another thing rolling through my mind is someone was telling me he's very good at sports as a kid but he always blew it when it came to the mental game he would throw temper tantrums and he would lose games because of that and that he knows for a fact is what kept him from being able to go on and do the next thing he had planned because everything else was the way it should have been and there are just a lot of kids that are like that. They're under a lot of pressure and just this tiny little thing can make a huge difference. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I didn't like the subject line either. I was struggling, struggling with it. It's brutal. You may write a hundred subject lines before you find one you like. Now does, I haven't read the end of this email. Does Hunter win the day or is it a sad ending? Sad. Oh, ending. It's, a, it's a sad ending. It's a true story too. Well, okay. I, that was a question I had. I'd be yeah. curious to know that further up because it holds my attention longer. Okay. Good point. He, he, he does say uh, it's a true story and it's, it's, it's really unfortunate, but if you don't want your kid to, so it, yeah. it is a bit of a bummer, but I kind of like that it, it, it's, it's not forgiving. Like, this, yeah, you know, yeah. It once it does have the slippery slope effect. Once you start reading it, that's it. You're going to read the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So then and then, I, of course, it's just a, it's an empty canvas from what to do with this guy from here, uh, William, uh, because I was like, well, this is, you know, pretty good. And I and I click on here and I was a, a little stunned. This video is pretty good. It's it's this guy. Uh, what's his name? John. John Madden. He John should Madden. he should write the way he talks. He can he he has beautiful videos. He's charismatic he's likable and he really is that kind of a nice guy he's charismatic on youtube but he can't write that's why i'm writing for him okay um yeah i don't even know it's like the video is gone now or something but um uh, he might be trying to make a sales page right now okay cool but so in the, the here's the crazy thing william uh like what's great is this guy can get nothing but better because he doesn't even say his name in the, in the video that was there he never even introduced himself and said hey i'm john madden uh not that john madden whatever you know I, right. I, i'm a player and i played and, and and blah 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 and i've coached hundreds of kids i just needed a, a you know 60 second sales hook like who are you what was this what's the struggle you help people overcome what did you discover that does it and what are the results you know? We've talked about redoing the videos. Yeah. So it's exciting, man. It, it, and then there was this, this is the only way I knew who the guy was. And uh, it, it, again, still, he does not even credential himself, credentializing himself in here. Uh, I, I, this even looks like a pretty Photoshopped picture. So I'm like, it is. He never made the majors. He, he okay. got to AAA when his arm blew out. Okay, cool. So, uh, the good news is, man, like nowhere to go but up. 
with this opportunity and your writing's great. Uh, I think you wrote a great email. I think you, you really get this, this avatar in the language they speak and um, keep posting stuff for us to give you feedback. Cause like I said, everything can get better, but I didn't have a lot to criticize about the email um, uh, in general. I think you did a great job. Thank you. I've gotten some good feedback on some other emails. I feel like I'm being too selfish when I start posting too much, but I've, I've learned a lot on the forum and, uh, and, and uh, listen, man, some people, real high level pros have really yeah. helped me out a lot. It's amazing. Well, e even, even the other mem members and, and as a side note, part of why uh, I'm talking with the BAs about feeling less pressure to, to answer every uh, critique is because when we, when we do that, it, it, it's great, but it can also be intimidating for some of the newer writers who will, have a lot to share right and so I, I i ask all the members to be more active in the feedback because it's the greatest way to learn it's by far the um uh thing i did early in my career that accelerated my my learning the most was nervously jumping into critiques and reading critiques and before i knew it i was confident and i was starting to see patterns and i was taking something from a different critique and applying it to another and so don't be shy about posting them william and the best thing you can do to to not feel guilty about posting it too much is is get involved in other critiques yes yes so if we all just do that it's right that's why we call it copy chief. The community, the tribe is the chief. We're, we're, we're all here for each other. So uh, there's one thing uh, about posting. Sometimes it's a very specialized niche. I mean, and I think a lot of times people who critique don't understand the language or the avatar very well. And I, I, what do you think about that? I mean, I just have to take that into consideration. You, you're talking about when you when you ask for a critique or when you... Yes, when I ask for a critique or, or sometimes when I give a critique, I have to say, well, I don't really understand. Yeah, this yeah, that, that's well. fine. I, I think it's, it's it's fine to give that caveat. First of all, again, like I said, like we, there's a thousand members of Copy Chief and the, they might be holding back and they might go, oh, I know a lot about this topic, but oh my God, Jimmy Parent's in here, like laying down wisdom. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to cool out. I wish nobody would ever do that because um, even if you have one thing you noticed, it's valuable to share and then you'll just get more comfortable. Um, uh, and so definitely post them up and you might be surprised who, who has some insight to it. And like Melanie said, copywriters can find the connection she doesn't have a sports, she has a son, he's not a sports kid, but she understands what it's like for him to show up for an important thing and how she would want to help him prepare for that, right? Um, Absolutely. And for you, William, you can say if you want, hey, I'm, uh, I'm not an expert in this. You're a reader, you're someone who might, might be interested right. in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the offer and that's all you qualification you need to give a valid uh, uh, critique all right cool yes. so thank, thank you everybody you so much. Yeah, thank you william for for submitting this uh i'm really excited i hope i hope this are you partnering with this guy is that the plan uh yes I, in fact uh i'm gonna be i'm gonna be doing a weekly newsletter for him oh cool perfect i mean dude I get, this is a perfect project for for all of copy chief to see it evolve and like let us you know, help you, guide you. Like so many of the people in here uh, have started newsletters, have sold through newsletters. And, and it's exciting to see a brand new project when you've got a guru, right? And you've got an audience and you've got a, a, a proven products out there that we know sell. Oh my God, like it's like, now let's just start building it. And uh, we'd all love to support you in that. Well, thank you. Cool. All right, Melanie, thank you so much for jumping on. I appreciate it. You're very it. welcome. It's great to see you. Melanie, Shinesty. Did you get my last email? <laughs> uh, could it possibly have been a LinkedIn message, in which case I didn't open it yet? No, I, I, sent, I sent an email about uh, Shinesty, and I think it was the, uh, I can't remember which one of the buyer types. Okay. Shinesty sells underwear. Okay, hey, I'll go find you, it. You did, okay, good. I thought, well, the I, underwear I, I might have found one of your buyer right. types. Perfect. Thank I you. Have some advice on that. So 
I, That's awesome. Yeah, I'll find it. Cool. Okay, great. Yeah. Everybody check out Melanie's nine buyers. It's uh, in the under guest trainings in the training dashboard. Uh, fantastic training about really understanding all the buyer types, meaning the avatars in how, even though they might be similar, they need to hear different things to feel included in the sales messaging. It's a fantastic training. Thank you, yeah. Melanie. Thank you, William. You're welcome. Thank great you. Great seeing you both. Everybody have a great weekend. Uh, remember February 17th, I think our next chief chat is scheduled for February 19th. So next time I'll see you live is on the training February uh, 17th. And uh, I'll see you inside a copy chief until then. Thanks, everybody. Bye. <laughs>